Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Now I know the title is a little bit clickbaity, but I guarantee you once you've watched this video from start to finish, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate user of DaVinci Resolve, you are going to come away with a little bit of extra knowledge that is gonna speed up your editing workflow. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So professional video editors always have one hand on the mouse and one hand on the keyboard. Why? Because keyboard shortcuts just make editing so much faster because it allows you to achieve multiple functions with one click or a couple of couple of key presses. And so in this video, highly requested from you guys is my commonly used shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve. Now, some of them you're probably gonna know and you're gonna be like, whoa, Nick, these are pretty common shortcuts. But some of you might not know them and I've chucked a couple in there that you probably don't know about. So hopefully you are all gonna come away with a little bit of extra knowledge that's gonna speed up your editing workflow from this video. Now, just a disclaimer before we start, I edit on a Mac. So whenever I use the term command, I refer to control if you're on a Windows PC. And if I use the term option, I'm referring to the Windows command alt. Let's just get that out of the way because I ain't correcting myself throughout this entire video. So don't hit me up in the comments, blah, blah, blah. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and go over my common shortcuts that I use in day-to-day -day editing. All right, so we're in DaVinci Resolve and we're gonna start off with the first shortcut. And this is one probably the majority of you know, but we'll start off with it. And that is Command-I. So by doing that, it's gonna bring up the import window. And the best part about it is that this will work across every single pane, whether that's the cut page, edit page, fusion page, it'll work across the lot. So it allows you to really quickly import media. And that's pretty much what I do is I will, for bigger projects, use this page here and just command I and bring in a bit of media and hit enter and there it is. Super simple, um, majority of NLE editors use that shortcut anyway. So anyway, good to know. The next shortcut I'm gonna teach you to use is a quick way to shift between the workspaces. Now you'll notice that on a laptop, Having these workspaces, you know, these icons down the bottom, it takes up some real estate, not a lot, but real estate nonetheless. And you can actually get rid of them by showing page navigation. And all of a sudden we get a little bit of extra space, which is very important on a laptop when you have a small screen. But then obviously how do you shift between the workspaces? Well, that's where hitting shift and the number keys comes into play. So it's pretty simple, starting with shift one, that's gonna be your project viewer. Shift two will be your media page, then shift three will be your cut page, shift four, edit page, and so on and so forth, right up until shift eight, which will be your export window. And you can actually go in and customize it. So if you don't use the cut page, you can get rid of that so that you don't have to go to four for your edit page. You can make that shift three, totally up to you. But those are really quick way to shift between your workspaces. And once you've got to memorize, it's pretty easy to switch between the two. And again, it just gives you that little bit extra real estate, which might not seem like a lot, but on a laptop, uh, more the merrier. So now we're in the edit page, I'm gonna drag a bit of footage down onto the timeline. And this is just so we can go through a few more things. So first off, let's go through how to individually select media in here. So obviously this clip is linked, but what if we wanted to delete the audio? It's really simple, you just option click or alt click if you're on a Windows. And you can do that for the video as well. And what that allows you to do is have it selected independently so you can move it and it will show you the delay there, or you can just delete it. Really easy to do. So navigating the timeline is pretty, pretty simple. Obviously you can just scroll on your touchpad or your mouse to go back and forth. Um, and then you, to zoom in, I like to use command plus or minus. So to zoom in, and then to zoom out. And I do this all the time whilst going through my cuts, going in and out and zooming in and out. And then if at any point you want to get a full overview of your entire timeline, hitting Shift Z is going to fit it all into the timeline space. So that's a quick navigation. So plus and minus with the command key selected, it's gonna zoom in and out. And I use non-stop literally all the time. And then Shift Z give you a nice overview of your entire timeline. So with the navigation shortcuts out of the way, let's go through some of my commonly used shortcuts for some of the tools. Now, the first one is the select mode, which is the shortcut A. And luckily, if we hover over these, we're gonna get the shortcut there, 
listed so it's easy to follow. So A is a common one, B is the, ne the next one I'll use and that's if I wanna manually make some cuts. Uh, generally, I will use the other shortcut for the blade tool, but we'll get that to that in a sec. So obviously now I'm on the blade tool. If I wanna select this clip, I just hit the A key. Now I can select that clip and move it around. And I'm always shifting between the selection tool, the blade tool, and the other one, which is the trim edit mode. So if we just punch in here and we hit the T key, we get the dynamic trim mode in DaVinci Resolve, which allows us to trim our clips and have the timeline adjust accordingly. And I use this all the time. I kind of go between this and some other methods, but by having that there, it's a really quick way to go. And then obviously I'll hit the A key and I generally going between the A, the T and B to make my edits and then I could hit T, make a small edit and I'll do edits like that. And then sometimes if I, you know, I use a mixture of all of these while I'm editing and generally if I'm making cuts, so say, I'll let's just use this clip here. If we're playing this and we go, you know what, I don't want a piece, I'll hit Command B and that's gonna blade every bit of media in the playhead unless you have one specifically selected. So for instance, if I have this clip over the top and it's selected and I hit Command B, you'll notice it will only blade the selected clip rather than both clips. But if I don't have it selected and I just have it there and we hit Command B, you'll notice it'll cut both. So that's another shortcut that I use. The next one I use is the ripple edit delete. I think it's this one here. Anyway, in, and it is Command Shift and the square bracket so you've got the close bracket and then you've got the start bracket and what that does is basically ripple deletes either to the end or to the start so if i use the close bracket it'll bring it closer and if i use the other bracket it's going to delete the front part of this clip here and i'll constantly do this by going through and cutting you know the bits of footage together using the command shift and bracket key to ripple delete back and forth and again there's no one particular tool that I use whilst editing. I'll use that one. And then sometimes I'll use the trim mode to edit. And then sometimes I'll go through and manually delete things. It just depends on how I'm feeling at the time. So this allows us to segue into another key, another shortcut that I'm constantly turning on and off. And that is the snapping tool, which is set to N. So obviously moving clips around, it's really good that it can snap to things. But if you wanna make some really fine adjustments, it can be a real pain because as you can see here, it's snapping between the playhead and the recent cut. But what if I wanna put it in between those two? I'll just hit the end key and then it's gonna allow me to make a more fine adjustment. And then generally I'll turn it back on because I find snapping quite useful, but it just allows me to have it on and off whenever I want it. And I'm always turning N on and off just so that I can control the snapping like so. All right, so let's talk about speed ramping. Very common editing tool. And although you have a lot of control in DaVinci Resolve to speed ramp, it can be a bit of a hassle because you have to right click, then you've got to go to retime controls and you've got to insert all your speed points. And then once you've inserted the speed points then you've got to right click and you've got to go retime curve, you've got to adjust it all like that. It's a bit of a hassle. So the easiest way to do it is Command R and that's going to, with the clip selected, open up your speed change. And you can go through here and you can add your speed points through like so. Change your speeds as if you're doing your normal speed ramp and all that, super, super simple. And now to get to the retime curve, we're going to actually create a custom shortcut that isn't used by this system, which is Command Shift R. So by going up here to DaVinci Resolve and then going to Keyboard Customization, it's really, really simple. You just go to the search and we're gonna type in retime curve. And then you just wanna make sure that you're searching all commands, otherwise it will only search in specific sections. Go to all commands, and you're gonna have retime there. It'll be blank, so all you need to do is click on the red box, go Command Shift R, and then go save. And it'll probably come up with this dialog box, what would you like to save the shortcut as? Name it whatever you want, and then you can get out of it. So what that now has allowed us to do, this shortcut which isn't used in, this, in DaVinci Resolve at all, is now we have Command R to open up our retime points and then Command Shift R to bring up our speed, you know, our curves. And we can go through really, really easily and make our adjustments as necessary to our speed ramp. And it's really, really easy to do, not hassle. And then to close it all off, Command Shift R, Command R, done. 
And if we wanted to go back through and edit it again, Command Shift R, open up our curve, change it. Super, super simple, really quick and easy way to speed up your workflow because let's be honest, we're always doing retime curves non-stop. So the next couple of shortcuts I wanna to talk to you about are gonna be in the color tab. I do talk about Fusion shortcuts quite a lot in my Fusion videos, so I'm not gonna do it in this video because to be honest, there's only one that I use and I use it every video, so I'm sure you're quite aware of it. So we're going to use our Shift command. So we're gonna go Shift six to switch to our color tab. What we're gonna do here is talk about some color grading. So there are a lot of different nodes. If you go here to color, you can add a lot of different types of nodes when color grading in DaVinci Resolve. But if you're just doing simple edits for a couple of clients and you don't need anything too over the top, the easiest shortcut to remember is option S. What that does does is add a blank, they're called serial nodes, but you just, I just, they're just blank nodes. And that is the easiest way to go through and add new edits. So if you wanna, you know, do a quick curve adjustment on this particular edit here, and then you wanna add a new node, you just do that and you can do some crazy color things, add another node. And so that's a really quick and easy shortcut to know is just option S just to add some serial nodes and I use this all the time to go through and create edits in here because generally I'll have four or five serial nodes for basic color correction. Now, something I get asked a lot about is how do we take still shots in DaVinci Resolve? And it's actually pretty easy. So in the color tab, what we can do is we can navigate to the frame that we want. And what we're gonna do is go Command, Option and G. And you can see here, if you don't have it open, open the gallery tab and it's created this screenshot here and that's just a screen grab. And all we need to do is right click on it and export. And you can export as a JPEG, PNG, TIFF file, whatever you want. And that is how you get screenshots. So if you know you're making a YouTube video and you want a thumbnail and you go, ooh, that is a good shot. Command, Option G, bang, there it is. And you can just export that like so. And that is the easiest way to do it. So there you guys have it. There is my common shortcuts that I use whilst editing in DaVinci Resolve. I really hope there is a few there that you weren't familiar with. That's gonna really, really make editing a lot easier for you guys. And if you did find some useful information in this video, just make sure you hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below. You know, maybe some recommendations on videos you guys would like to see or your favorite shortcut in DaVinci Resolve. Maybe there's some that I don't use that you guys use. Let me know down below. And yeah, until the next video guys, See ya.